Hello guys, this is Deepika from MyTutorialRack.com. In this tutorial, we are going to go ahead and take a look at this Resources tab. Now, the items that you see in this particular tab are focused on storing different types of values which can be saved and manipulated during the course of the flow being processed. So, whenever you need to use some data or to store some data which we want to use in the flow, then we can use this resources tab to create some variables to store data and those data can be used in the flow. In the case of the palette tabs, you were used to dragging the elements to the canvas to draw the flow logic. But the resources tab, you cannot drag and drop these values can be created to be used by the elements in the palette. So as you can see here, these are the different elements which are available under the resources tab. So the first we have is the variable. Now create an updatable value that you can use throughout your flow. So this is what your variable can do. So now when you go ahead and double click on this, this is the pop-up message that it shows. The first thing it asks you is what is the name, the name for the variable that you want to give? What is the data type? Is it a text? Is it a number variable? Is it a currency? Is it a date, date, time or boolean? Variable is nothing but it is used to store some information. Now here you're going to specify what kind of information you want to store. Is it going to be a text field? Is it going to be a number? Is Are you storing a currency? So that is what this data type specifies. Then here you're going to specify the name for your variable. For example, you wanted to store the maximum salary or you want to store the minimum salary or you wanted to store something then you have to provide the name for the variable here and then you will see this input output type and there are four options for you to choose from one we have is the private then we have is the input only then you have is the output only and then is the input and output now what is the purpose of this pri private these are basically the scopes you can think like the scope the variable, if you have set it to private, this variable cannot be passed into the flow and it cannot be accessed outside the flow as well. So the private is very, very private. It can cannot be passed onto the flow and it can also not be accessed outside of the flow. Now, the input only scope, if you have created a variable with this scope, that particular variable values can be passed into the flow means you can use those variable values in the flow if you have created a variable with this output only scope then that particular variable can be referenced outside the flow and then you have is the input and the output the variable with this input and output scope can be passed into the flow and can also be accessed outside the flow so, so this is one of the highest scope this is one of the limited scope this has more power because you can use this variable inside of the flow as well as outside of the flow so these are the different so these are the different values that you need to provide in order to create a variable and the type of the variable you have to provide the input output type and if you wanted to provide any default value then you can specify the default value here as well now, the next thing that you have is the collection variable. It tells you it stored multiple values of the same data type and you can reference a collection throughout the flow. So a collection variable is a collection or a list of variables all with the same data type as a single variable. Let's say if you want to store collection of opportunities, this is essentially a way to group a logic set of variables of the same data type for use all throughout the flow and then as you can see the collection variables also have the same scope as variables like you have the option of private input only output only input and output you can create the collection variable and you can use one of these scope for that particular variable then you have is the s object variable it stores the field values which you can reference and update throughout the flow for a salesforce record that is what the s object variable is so 
you can think like it is a variable which holds a single record for a specific object from Salesforce. Let's say if you wanted to store a account with uh, account information which has the ID of this. So if you wanted to store that account record, you can use this variable to sta store that particular account. Unlike a collection variable, this particular S object variable can store many values of different type. But those values must be for a valid fields on a standard or custom object in Salesforce. And here also you have the same type of input output scopes that you have for variables. So you can choose one of these scopes when you're creating the S object variables. Then you have is the S object collection variable. This particular variable store the field values for multiple records. You can reference the S object collection to create, update or delete the Salesforce records. Then we have is the constant. Now this is a way to store a value that can be set once and not changed later. It means if you wanted to store a fixed value, let's say you wanted to store the value of pi or you wanted to store the interest rate which is fixed so you can use this variable to store something which is which is not going to change in the future so this particular element is very useful for defining default values or values that should never change throughout the course of the flow the next one we have is the formula instead of storing a value this type of element is a derived value this means that you can use other flow resources to calculate this value that changes throughout the flow processing. It functions very similar to like the formula field on the Salesforce object. Then you have is the text temp. This is a formatted text that can be used throughout the flow. Not only this text be formatted with the rich text editor, but it can also display values from other resources within it. So if you remember in the example under the end screen we have basically displaying the the name what the user has entered in the previous field so we kind of not only we have to, we can just add text but we can also refer to the elements that we have used in the flow then we have is this choice this is a single option to be used in a set of options that the end user can choose from on a screen. So let's say what if the user has been given a screen to pick up what account type he wants to he wants to create. Does he wants to, and they, you have two options. So this choice element is used to create those options. Like if you would like say the drop down say it's a personal savings or it's a money markets account. So you have two options to choose from. So when you create a choice, you see you have to provide the label, then the unique name, what is the type of the value data type, and the stored value. We will use the choice variable and in the next example. The next one we have is the dynamic choice, the dynamic record choice. Now, the dynamic counterpart to the choice resource. So this is like just the counterpart of this choice element. If you need to grab data from a Salesforce object and dynamically show it, then this is the resource that you're going to use. So this is about the different elements which are available in the resources tab. The pick list choice, it basically uses the values of a Salesforce pick list or multi-select pick list field to create a reusable set of choices. So let's say if you're using some salutations like Mr, Miss, etc. And that particular salutation field is already available in the contact record. So you can use this to refer to the existing field that you have. So you can reuse those set of choices here. So that is what the pick list choices. So this is all about the resources tab in the flow designer.